this specific body of work um, really has come out of a concern for um, thinking about matter, um, you know, uh, matter in terms of like a, a materialistic or scientific materialist notion of, of the universe. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of focused in these paintings in particular on this idea of the toxic or toxicity um, because I think the idea of um, toxic matter is both, it kind of both talks about um, the idea of, of matter as, as sort of self-reactive and that sort of self-reactivity is what sort of gives uh, makes life possible, but that also that self reactivity at an extreme level is sort of what also can like, kill life. So I thought the toxic sort of touches on this question of life, but I don't it doesn't have to be about that. It's also about this sort of um, action of matter on top of matter, just this sort of like I said, the kind of a self devouring image. So in the paintings, um, I'm you know I'm employing a couple of different strategies. I think. One is um, the particular imagery I use. I focus a lot on things that reference um, what I what I kind of think of as like geochemical processes. So there's a lot of like you know weird kind of um, primary colored like liquids. There's a lot of like cracked or fissured substrates, and I do all th those things in particular to so kind of denote this idea of inorganic. I'm you know I'm also using a number of other strategies. A sort of fractured image plane is, is sort of referencing in, in particular um, you know our sort of lack of access to some of these things too like we have to send you know it's almost like with space exploration we have to send a probe out you know to to some of these like these kind of planets that we couldn't possibly you know inhabit I've done in a couple of the paintings in particular the really large one um, which is titled Azoic Blightscape, um, where I'm using multiple panels that are that are of, of a different, like basic monochromatic color scheme. So I, I'm kind of employing like three basic color schemes in the paintings. There's this sort of um, green bluish color. Then there's this sort of kind of fairly toxic purple. And then the last is this much more earthy kind of brown color. And when I put the panels together, in particular, you have these, this this change in color scheme, which is um, pretty noticeable in the large painting in, in Azoic Blightscape, um, where it almost feels like what you're seeing is a slider that's being moved across, and you're actually seeing like two different levels of reality that are sort of superimposed. They're actually sort of side by side happening simultaneously, but you have to change your level of access to see what's going on. So it kind of goes from there's this green world and then there's this purple world, and we don't know which one sort of sits on top of the other. Um, and that is also another big issue in my paintings too, which is scale. Um, not just the scale of the paintings themselves, but there's also the scale of what it is you're looking at. It's usually a little bit ambiguous whether or not things are very large or very small or somewhere in between. Um, I like to think that that there isn't sort of a like a privileged level of reality. That there isn't some level of reality that's more important than the others. You know, physics in particular likes to say that the level of, of atoms and subatomic particles is sort of the more real layer of reality. And I don't I don't think that that's actually true. I think it. it the, the level we experience is just as real. The level that an ant experiences is just as, as real. The level that you know a planet experiences or, or a stellar body experiences is also just as real. So um, I, I kind of like this idea of layering ambiguous scales where it sort of doesn't give privilege to any one kind of way of looking at the universe. I think it's the one called duplicitous reactance. And that's the one that actually uses all three of the different color schemes in one. Um, you know, one particular painting. So it's a it's a fairly long painting, but, but not very large. It's about um, eight inches by like, forty six inches. So it's very long and, and kind of thin. And, and I kind of like that strategy because it gives the notion that what we're seeing is like a slice of something much larger. All the all the you know portions of the image go off the edge um, of the image plane, off the off the edge of the, the panel. So it gives you impression you're not seeing all of what's there. And I think by varying the scale of the paintings, but not varying the actual size at which I paint elements, you get to see a larger or narrower swath of those things. And I think that that's sort of what one of the things that's sort of evocative about the actual change in scale in the paintings themselves, too. Each of the paintings has a kind of a, 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 
complicated title. There, there are actually multiple titles for the paintings. So, for instance, um, one of the, t the paintings' full titles is Putrolithic colon viscous parasitic substrata cut crepitating surface erosion cut plasmatic cess vacua and then in parentheses plus anachronic disintegration of unifor spongiform bulk and I got that idea of doing these sort of multiple titles because my paintings are, are, are dealing with a sort of fractured image plane they're not showing just sort of one thing happening there's not a specific narrative to any of the paintings there's a there's a hint of activity, but not of any particular chronology. And so I thought it would be interesting to actually title not just the paintings themselves, but a few moments within. 